What's up ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Good, The Bad and The Stupid, it's Monday the 7th of September. Hope you've had a fantastic weekend, that's my catchphrase, hope you've had a fantastic weekend. I say that every time. Um, Got to come up with something different, but for now, if you've only just got here, you, know, you won't know any difference anyway, if you've never seen me or heard me before, um, welcome. <laughs> it's, the, uh, it's a podcast where I talk and um, you listen and think I'm talking absolute nonsense because I make it up as I go along. It's all about the news, but it's my take on the news and uh, that isn't much to... Um, it's not educational, let's put it that way. Anyway, I've got to be somewhere, so have you, so let's get on with it. Um, it's What day is it today? It's Monday, isn't it? I've already said that. Um, happy days if he was living in Tel Aviv over the weekend because uh, they had a green drone dropping... Uh, better than bombs, fucking... They were dropping... Uh, it was dropping cannabis bags of cannabis all over the city from a drone and it was some two grams uh um two two gram bags so it was raining weed in uh tel aviv so that would have been quite funny wouldn't it if you uh, managed to catch catch one you can tell who, who's uh who's the drug users the ones that are running around trying to fucking get more than uh who knows what it is instantly and are running around chasing them and grabbing them and picking them up other people just go what the hell is that <clears throat> never seen it before I'm just like you know and even if I did I'm going to the Wailing Wall I've got my black hat on I've got my curly sideburns I've got my long coat I've got my bible and I'm going to wail at the wall I don't care what that green stuff is in that bag nothing to do with me uh, nothing to do with me because I don't do anything <laughs> we don't do anything other than uh, what we do at the wall and a very very few other things um but anyway so if you lived in tel aviv that's good news should have dropped it all over fucking palestine though they need it more than them palestine would fucking could do with bags of money could do with fucking you know tvs water food fucking uh houses you name it, they fucking drop it all over in Palestine. Bomb, well, they're fucking getting plenty of bombs. They should have been dropping fucking weed flowers. They should have been dropping love bombs. That's what they should be sending over there. They've got to learn to fucking love each other, or at least fucking treat people with uh, treat <coughs> treat each other with, uh, or definitely treat the Palestinians with fucking respect. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> I'm digging myself a uh, controversial tunnel there, and hopefully the Palestinians can escape through it and go and uh, and get some money out of the uh, Israeli side. <coughs> um, fly tipping in Birmingham, my town, Birmingham. Fly tipping. Uh, the street is so rife in this one in this one street that in Borsal Heath, he claims that tippers have been dumping waste there for several times a day for five years. Well. If they're dumping waste there several times a day for five years, why isn't somebody standing there and catching them and taking details of their, uh, you know, you've got all the fucking, the clues there. You don't need Poirot to go, how did this happen? Five times in a day for five years and nobody knows who it is yet. Come on, fucking hell. You need to fucking do a bit of like, you know, citizens police. Just, I don't like to see Birmingham becoming, uh, being treated as a, as a fly tipping shithole. <laughs> It's already a shithole. We don't need any more fly tippers to make it look worse than it is. <clears throat> Birmingham's on the up. Birmingham is the place to be. Anybody from another country here, yeah, make sure you get to Birmingham when you come to England. Forget forget Manchester. Forget London. Overrated. Ma London's overrated. Manchester thinks it's Birmingham, but it's not. It thinks it's the second city. Birmingham's the second city. Uh, if you've got the canal system, we've got more canals than Venice. That's the biggest uh, claim to fame. Although you're more likely to be eating a 99 in Birmingham rather than a Cornetto in the pissing down the rain <laughs> while, you, while your bag's being mugged. But yeah, so, uh, and you're getting fly tipped all over your fucking shoes as you're walking through the town. But no, fly tippers, just catch them out, just like waiting, waiting, uh, or, or at least put a fucking camera up there if it's happening every day for five years. Jesus, do I have to tell people how to do everything? It wouldn't fucking happen in my street. I'd have them. I'd be like Mr. Nosy Parker, you know, like the uh, the sit with my clipboard going around and becoming the the head of the police of the street. This guy's uh, the Ice Man. This is what you call the Ice Man. This guy just broke his own record, or broke a world record. To, I mean, it's a record to sit in a bath full of ice cubes for fucking an, uh, two and a half hours. That's how long it lasted. Two hours and. Uh, so I've, I've ripped it in half now, so I can't see. For two and a half hours, roughly, he sat in ice cubes. <laughs> so uh, I could imagine that uh, it was all inside out when he got out. 
inside his underpants, I'd imagine. He said his toes, he had to get his socks on straight away because your toes, your feet are the first things to uh, to get, um, to go. So you need to warm up first before your toes fucking snap off. Anyway, so there you go. That's a, um, that's like, a, what's it called? A, uh, a, a no mark, it's an unusual thing that not many people are doing, I was trying to say. No ice cubes, no many people. I got confused Fucking by up. some noise from the other room. <laughs> what I was trying to say was, um, the before I was uh, rudely interrupted and I've had to stop and bodge this video together, was that the Iceman, the guy who made the uh, ice cubes in the bath... <laughs> It's nobody's going to do it. It's like fucking no. It's not like everybody's fucking training for that, are they? Where are you going to get all the ice from? He said he's doing it to uh, bring, uh, bring what's he called? Um, people's minds to uh, the glaciers melting and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't think anybody's thinking about that while they're watching him in a bag bath of ice. They're just thinking, what a crazy fucking lunatic he is. But anyway, he did it, and he's going to do it again next uh, year to do it for three hours. So uh, there you go. See if you can get in there beforehand and see if you can top him because you can get in the top of the Guinness Book of Records. I saw another one the other day. Somebody did the world's biggest What's It. If you don't know what What's It is, it's, it's, it's a shit crisp from England. And it, they did like the world's... It, it got in the Guinness Book of Records for being the longest baked snack in fucking uh, in the world. And 10 people had to stand in a row holding it with their hands. 10 fucking foot long. And it was the world's longest baked snack. <laughs> so that's it again, the shittiest uh, Guinness Book of Records. Who else is, how many other contenders were there? So all you got to do if you ever want to get in there is pick the shittiest fucking thing that you can find and then just do that because nobody would have done it. Something that's really laborious that, or even make one up because then you'll be first on the leaderboard, won't you? Anyway, um, Jammy Dodgers. Jammy Dodgers are going to run out. Panic stations, jammy dodgers. We're going to have a shortage of jammy dodgers as soon as Brexit happens, apparently. We're going to run out of jam filled bickies and wagon wheels. I tell you what, if that's not a reason to fucking halt, put the brakes on Brexit straight away and think, rethink what we're playing at, nobody can go without jammy dodgers and wagon wheels. It's going to cause fucking riots, that is. Um, again, if you don't know what they are, you're not missing anything. They're, the, they're just biscuits with jam in the middle. <laughs> Although saying that, if you're in America, you've got Oreos. We got Oreos, but it's a, it's an American thing, isn't it? Oreos. They are fucking horrible. They are. I'm not a big fan of them. They they, they could go. I, don't, I wouldn't miss them. Um, but digestives. That's my biscuit of choice. I'm, uh, I'll have you know. One because they're boring, and it means I don't eat the whole pack. And two, that's it. <laughs> the boring, and I don't eat the whole pack. That's the only reason. Anything else? They're too nice, and I just fucking down the lot and feel fucking guilty for being a fat. That bastard. Right, um, good looking people are likely to be generous too. Studies show. <laughs> That's bullshit. I know loads of ugly people that are, are, uh, are generous. I know loads of good looking people that are fucking that far up their own ass. They wouldn't give you anything. They want you to give them. They want you to compliment them. <laughs> they're looking for, uh, you know, they're fishing for your compliments. So they're not looking to give anything out. So I don't think that's true at all. And actually, they find that the most poorest of people, they're the most generous of the lot. So, um, although that doesn't come down to looks, but generally, if you're poor, you probably ain't looking too clever at the same time. Because, you know, I'm not about poor as in fucking homeless or, uh, you know, on the fucking bottom end of the ladder. You're likely to be the ones who... Uh, but at the same time, generous. You give away, you, last, you share your last thing, you give away your last thing. Not the fucking people at the top. They want everything you've got and they don't want to spend any of theirs. <laughs> they put it all on fucking tax, on the tax man. I mean, they've got it right, but it ain't not down to fucking morals and uh, and and personality. Like, they ain't got fucking any of that. They've got the business acumen, they've got the money, but they ain't got my fucking friendship. <laughs> because I can't get into that club. I haven't got that money to match up anyway, so I wouldn't ever be at the same bar with that person because I wouldn't be able to buy him a round back. He'd buy around, I'd have to disappear. It'd be like £100 for two drinks, I'd imagine. Um, what else we got? Fitness. Brit Brits will enjoy a burst of tropical warmth this week amid predictions of an Indian summer last month. I should have done that at the beginning. I usually do the weather first. <laughs> this is, I mean, it is. The, the, we've got an Indian summer coming anyway, so that's good news because it's been grey. I thought it was that was it. 
I thought the lights had been turned off on summer, but we got an Indian summer. We've had fucking Sahara deserts, we've had African plumes, now we've got an Indian summer. So don't uh, put your beach towels away just yet and your sun cream. That's British weather. We get like an Indian summer in the middle of October. <laughs> so uh, we'll take it. Because it's going to be pissing down until then, I imagine. So uh, anything to uh, alleviate the stress of being soaking wet for days. Well, last one. If you're a whiskey drinker, anybody who's a whiskey drinker, you're gonna you're gonna love this one. Save your bottles. It ain't gonna be Bell's whiskey or some shit you get from the uh, <laughs> some shit you get from the off license. But these bottles of whiskey, Macallan whiskey, 34 rare bottles of Macallan whiskey, sold for 762. Thousand five hundred pound vintage bottles spanning from 1940 to 1976, average more than 22,000 each after an online bidding war. That is fucking mental. Whiskey, and I wonder if the people who bought them are going to drink them. <laughs> it clearly doesn't go off because these are from 1945, oh, 1940 to 1976, yeah. But you know, I'll tell you what, if I was having a drink, I told you these are the people I've just mentioned, the ones at the top. Who can afford to crack open a bottle of that when they're having a bit of a celebration? They open a bottle of that. When I'm having a bit of celebration, I open a bottle of uh, what's it called? Um, fizzy wine. That's about as close as it gets. Or, or a can of skull. But these are opening a £22,000 bottle of uh, whiskey and not giving it a fucking second thought. <clears throat> Nice if you can get it, and also nice if you're the person who sold them, because whoever paid for them are fucking nuts anyway, because they ain't worth it, are they? They're just worth what somebody's willing to pay, and if you can take the money off them, good on you. Right, this is going to be the last one. Last one, because I've, I've, I've lost myself now, because I've had to budge this video together, so I don't know what, how the time's going. So uh, anyway, we're going to leave it on this one. Fitness trainers will be banned from telling students to work off last night's pizza over claims it's fat phobic that's pathetic i'm sorry <laughs> if anybody's going to be offended by that it's because of the fat and if they're fat they shouldn't be offended by somebody uh saying to work off last night's pizza <laughs> it's quite funny actually because maybe the funny thing is is maybe they didn't have a pizza if they did have a pizza that's all right but if they didn't i guess you've been um facetious or you're assuming but if a fat person walks in they're just having a joke aren't they and they're just and they're saying it to anybody. They're just trying to get everybody. Make sure you're fucking giving it some in your class because otherwise you're wasting your time being here. But if you're fat and you're at the gym class, that's a Brucey bonus point for me anyway. So uh, even if you are eating pizza, you should be thinking to yourself, "I got to burn off that like, last night's pizza," and that's why I'm at the gym in the first place. But to ban fitness trainers for, for saying it, I'm sorry, but that is just I would say give them loads more of those kind of phrases to say. Because it tells people straight, you know where you stand, don't you? If you're going to walk in, and it cuts the fucking shit from the, uh, the the chaff from the whatever the fuck the saying is. You're getting people who come in who want to be told to fucking lose it and not be muddy coddled. You're there. You look, you're fat. You got to burn that shit off. Your ass is fucking too big for you. Get on that fucking treadmill and give me fucking an hour <laughs> or whatever. So uh, anyway, if you're fat and you're on the way to the gym. Don't be put off when your trainer tells you so, because you're going to look better afterwards. Anyway, I'm going to leave you there. Hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I'll do another one tomorrow. See you later. Bye.